Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 12th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, DDA looked at a pretty interesting Tridex sample. Now, initially, it didn't really look all that different from other malicious emails. It was a PDF with a link to a Word document. What made this particular sample a little bit different was that the macro within the Word document was actually digitally signed. Of course, it's pretty straightforward for an attacker to obtain a digital certificate to use for such a signature. Doesn't necessarily mean that you should trust it, but apparently there are organizations out there that do allow all signed macros to run. And of course, this could get you into trouble. In a follow up, um, Didier then talked about how to detect these uh, signed uh, macros. And he included a Yara rule with his diary that should help you identify these documents. And a number of large websites are attempting to help blind people better navigate their site by adding a Browse Aloud plugin that is published by company TextHelp. Now, the way this is often done is by adding JavaScript to the website that then implements this Browse Aloud functionality. However, the JavaScript itself is not copied to that particular website's server. Instead, it's just included remotely. On Sunday, however, TextHelp's server that actually hosts this JavaScript was compromised and some enterprising individual did swap the JavaScript for a piece of JavaScript that added a crypto coin miner functionality. One of the high profile sites being affected by this was uscourts.gov, a gateway to various federal courts. Also, the United Kingdom's Information Commissioner's Office was hit by this particular exploit. And that particular website is actually still down as I'm recording this. Now, I'm not familiar with this plugin, but if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to include a code like this from another website, you may want to consider implementing Sub Resource Integrity or SRI. It's a pretty simple but effective way to block altered JavaScript like this. However, with all script tags that include uh, content from third party sites, you will have to include a SHA hash of uh, that particular content. This gives the browser a chance to verify the hash and make sure the script did not get altered. This of course works well if the script is static. However, if you have companies that continuously keep updating their script, then this may of course not work for you. Personally, I certainly prefer hosting content like this myself. And another week and another cryptocurrency exchange that got breached. This time it's Bitcrail. Bitcrail made a little bit of name for itself used by trading the nano cryptocurrency. And that was really the currency affected here in this latest breach. Apparently about $170 million worth of the currency have been lost in this breach. And Bitcrail pretty much ceased operations as a result of that breach. They do not have sufficient reserves to actually cover these losses. So as a result of this breach, they're now insolvent. There was a little bit of talk whether this may actually not have been a breach against Bitgrail, but a problem with the Nano protocol. Well, as so far, it looks really like this was a problem with Bitgrail itself and doesn't look like anything related to the Nano currency itself was the problem here. And with the next story, it sounds really familiar. So I'm not 100% sure if uh, this is actually behavior that has been observed before. In particular, I think I've seen this uh, being actually done with mobile devices. The problem here is that screenshots can leak data across sandboxed applications. 
On Mac OS, an application can take a screenshot of the entire screen, not just of whatever the application is actually displaying right now. So with that, any application can take a screenshot and exfiltrate any information that is being exposed on the screen. Overall, of course, this relies on the right information being visible at the time when the screenshot is taken. But uh, in the blog post introducing this vulnerability, there's also some code on using OCR libraries, for example, to then automatically extract text from these screenshots. So you could continuously take screenshots, then exfiltrate just the text being displayed. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.